Luis Garavito, also known as La Bestia, the Beast, is a Colombian serial killer who between 1992 and 1997 murdered at least 140 children. However, it's believed he killed between 300 to 400, making him the most prolific serial killer in modern history. By the time he began his rampage, he'd already raped and tortured hundreds of children. His crimes were truly horrific and characterised by rape and sickening acts of torture. Garavito is a sexual sadist and psychopath whose life was solely devoted to the sexual violation and murder of children. A remorseless monster, his crimes and the subsequent punishment will astound and sicken you. Welcome to Evil Among Us. Luis Alfredo Garavito was born in Genova, Colombia, on the 25th of January 1957, to Manuel and Rosa. He was one of seven children. Almost everything we know of Garavito's childhood comes from his own accounts, and unfortunately, due to him, like other serial killers, appearing to be a pathological liar, it's difficult to know what is true about him and what are lies, as some of his statements clearly contradict themselves and do not gel with official records. However, what he has said is that his father was an alcoholic who was physically and emotionally abusive towards all the members of the family. He would also have multiple affairs. With regards to his mother, Garavito described her as a violent disciplinarian who showed her children no affection and appeared to have no real interest in them. Garavito recalled an incident where he was apparently tied to a tree by his father and beaten when he was only six or seven years old for defending his mother. Garavito also claimed his father would sexually abuse him and his siblings. News articles I've read from Colombia appear to indicate that Garavito's mother was a prostitute and that he and his siblings would see her having sex with various clients. Garavito was claimed to have run away at the age of eight years old and, soon after this, was targeted by a paedophile who raped him. He reports to have then joined a street gang for protection. However, it's also reported, and this seems more credible, that Garavito remained in the family home until the age of at least 10 or 11 years old, and this is based on him attending school until this age. In school, Garavito was described as a keen student, but he had difficulty learning and was mocked by his peers as being simple. He was also ridiculed due to his physical appearance, including the fact he wore thick glasses. This seemed to lead Garavito to withdraw into himself. He would play on his own and become more and more aggressive, lashing out violently when bullied and belittled. According to him, Garavito was apparently forbidden from having friends by his father, so he was isolated both at home and at school, and subjected to and witnessed to horrific acts of abuse. Garavito apparently left school in or around 1968 in order to get work to earn money for the family who lived on the poverty line. Garavito claimed that the next year he began being repeatedly abused by a drugstore worker who was a friend of his father's. Garavito claimed that he was raped, burnt and cut by this individual, but nothing was done to stop this. Garavito also claimed that this abuse left him suicidal, but rather than killing himself, he found that killing and skinning animals in particular birds, gave him a sense of relief and a feeling of power when he felt utterly powerless. By the time he was a teenager, it's reported that Garavito's demeanour had changed entirely and he was now morose, withdrawn and resentful towards society, with him acting as though he was, quote, ready to take revenge on the world. He was also now very aggressive, prone to explosive acts of violence when he felt aggrieved or did not get his own way. Around this time, so around the age of 12 to 13 years old, Garavito began molesting his siblings, forcing them to sleep naked with him, where he would touch them and get them to touch him. Around this time, Garavito stated that he was also molesting young boys in the area, including a six-year-old neighbour. In 1971, so when he was around 14 years old, Garavito stated he was raped again by a man who had shown him pornography. By the age of 15 years old, Garavito was showing signs of a proclivity towards acts of extreme sexual violence and would attempt to initiate sexual contact with girls who would reject his advances to which he would respond with violence. However, Garavito continued to predominantly molest little boys and was briefly kicked out of the family home this year when he was caught trying to rape a five-year-old boy he had lured off the streets. Garavito's first brush with the law 
came when he was 16 years old when he sexually assaulted a six-year-old boy at a station in Bogota. This child screamed, alerting passers-by, and Garavito was arrested. Garavito was accused of attempted rape, but it appears when he said that his only intention was to quote, lightly molest the boy, he was released without charge. His father's only issue with his son's behaviour was that he'd sexually assaulted a boy and not a girl. Garavito did form relationships with some women, but when he drank, he became a monster and would physically abuse his partners, showing extreme sexual jealousy, and this led to relationships ending and him wearing out his welcome in towns and cities before moving on to the next place, with the pattern repeating over and over again. He seemed drawn to women with children, and he later claimed this was because he wanted a ready-made family and to have a wife and children that he could look after. Considering that he was a prolific paedophile, I've no doubt that he began these relationships to get access to the children. As personal relationships broke down, Garavito had become more angry, which meant he drank more, meaning he was more violent, meaning more relationships would break down, creating a self-perpetuating cycle. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, Garavito would abuse children, either those he dragged off the streets, or he would sometimes engage the services of child prostitutes and rape them, knowing they would be unlikely to go to the police. Garavito was a prolific child molester, and initially, he let his victims live, and the level of violence used was far less extreme than the horrific nature of his later crimes. In approximately 1979, when Garavito was aged around 22 years old, he attacked a child called William, who was nine years old at the time. Years later, William described the attack, with him stating he was walking to play with his friends, when he was grabbed by Garavito from behind, and then, quote, he showed me a machete and told me, don't make noise, don't scream, don't do anything because I'll kill you. He told me to take off my shirt, he took off my pants, then he started kissing me, horrible, all over my body. He would take my penis and suck it, and kiss my mouth. He took my tongue and sucked it too hard to tear it off, and told me, this is how you have to do it to me. Garavito then took William to a house, and abused him for the next five hours, including performing oral sex on him, making William do this to him, whilst also beating him. Eventually, William was able to escape and run away. Similarly, in around 1991, Garavito approached 10-year-old Carlos Alberto in Quindío, a region in the west of Colombia. The pair walked to a secluded area, with Garavito being very amenable, but suddenly, he pulled out a knife and held it to Carlos's throat, before tying him up, raping him, and torturing him. Carlos was only able to survive, because he convinced Garavito that he'd enjoyed the abuse, which led to Garavito stating, quote, See you next week. That's how I like it. That you also like it. Whilst abusing children, Garavito was showing signs of significant mental illness, including psychotic episodes, i.e. breaks from reality. He apparently wrote the names of the children he abused in a notebook, and then prayed for them, whilst beating his chest, whilst naked, in some sort of strange ritual. He would also obsessively read the Bible, and also had an interest in the occult. Garavito would apparently have bouts of depression due to feelings of guilt for his crimes, and would wake up in tears before breaking out into laughter, remembering the sexual pleasure he got from their suffering. This is according to his own words, and whilst I think the laughter is true, I have no doubt that any statements of remorse or guilt are lies. Garavito would move around Colombia, and wherever he went, there was a spike in the number of children who were molested. Garavito was methodical and cunning offender. He would specifically target homeless children, orphan boys living in the streets who were just looking for money and food. Garavito would offer them both, and for children who had addictions to alcohol and drugs, he would offer them their next fix. He would also pose as different people and would wear various costumes, with him disguising himself as a priest, a street vendor, and an elderly man offering these children jobs or asking them for help around the house in exchange for room and board. Garavito would never appear in the same disguise too often in order to avoid suspicion. The whole point of this routine was to lure children away from populated areas with Garavito often walking them long distances in order to tire them out so they would be able to fight back, then he would attack them. Throughout the 1980s, the savagery of Garavito's abuse of children became more extreme. He would burn, rape, cut and stab the children, often torturing them for hours whilst they were tied up, 
and screaming. During this same period, he also spent time in psychiatric hospitals after attempting suicide on several occasions and displaying signs of acute mental illness. This included a period of five years according to police reports. So this period of 12 years can be reduced down to seven years, meaning that on average, Garavito was molesting two children a month, but this figure is likely much higher. By 1992, I think that Luis Garavito was not getting the same high from raping and torturing children, and he began a campaign of murder, which would claim the lives of hundreds of little boys across Colombia. According to Garavito, in the middle of 1992, he was using a Ouija board when he began communicating with the devil, who asked whether he wished to serve him. Garavito said he then made a pact with the devil, who commanded him to kill as many children as possible. Garavito's first attempted murder apparently occurred on the 1st of October 1992, when he approached a child selling sweets and cigars in the streets of Bolivar, an area in the north of Colombia. Garavito lured this boy to a secluded area and began to attack him, but was interrupted by passers-by and then beaten by the police. Just three days later, on the 4th of October 1992, Garavito claimed his first victim, 13-year-old Juan Carlos, who he lured to a secluded area with the promise of paid work. Once there, Garavito raped Juan and used a butcher knife he had recently purchased to slice his throat and cut off his penis. The floodgates opened after this first killing and Garavito engaged in a campaign of rape and murder across Colombia over the next seven years, including claiming his second victim within six days. This time he raped and murdered a six-year-old boy. Few children escaped from Garavito, but those that survived give us an insight into the depravity of this man. One such child was Brand Alvarez, who was 16 years old when he was attacked by Garavito in the mid-1990s. Brand and his father worked in cockfighting, and, whilst his father tended to the birds, Brand was lured to a secluded area. Garavito then threatened him with a knife, bound him, raped him, and tortured him, including stabbing him seven times with a screwdriver. As Garavito progressed in his killing spree, his crimes became increasingly more heinous and sadistic. Please be warned, I'm going to give a rundown of the things he did to his victims. So please, if you don't want to hear this, then skip through the video until you can no longer see this warning. As a sexual sadist, Garavito would often rape and torture the children at the same time, as it appears that violence was the only way he could become aroused and achieve orgasm. He would walk the children long distances so they would get tired and were unable to resist, at which point he would typically tie them up and stab them, either with a knife or a screwdriver, in areas that wouldn't immediately kill them but would cause them significant pain, including their hands, feet and buttocks. Garavito would also use knife blades held between his fingers to whip the children and flay the skin from their bodies, as well as cutting off their toes and fingers. Garavito would sometimes cut the child's bellies open so their intestines would fall out of their body, and during all of this torture, he would only rape them. Garavito's victims were almost always found with deep bite marks on their bodies. He would also cut off the boys' penises when they were still alive. Garavito would ultimately kill the children through a variety of methods, most commonly cutting their throat with a knife, but he would also sometimes stab the children to death, in some cases over a hundred times, and, on other occasions, he would decapitate the children while they were conscious. As a final indignity, he would often place the severed penises of his victims into their mouths. Garavito would also have sex with the children's bodies after they had died. Then, he would simply leave the children's bodies naked where he killed them and walk off. Garavito would often be drunk when killing the children, and brandy bottles were found at many of the crime scenes. Garavito is believed to have raped and murdered boys in approximately 54 towns across Colombia. Within each town, he would molest and murder multiple children, having selected a secluded site to lure them to, creating mass graves in many areas that he visited. For example, he lured eight boys aged between 9 to 11 years old from a local school in La Victoria district of Colombia, he would lure each one to a wooded area before raping and murdering them. I can only imagine the horror these children went through in their final moments, and probably they were taken to a secluded area, and the last thing they saw was probably the bodies of other murdered children, and they knew at that point there was no escape. 
Garavito's whole life was devoted to the rape and murder of young boys. It was all he was focused on, and he was prolific. For example, in 1993 alone, he sought to murder at least 20 children, and each year, the frequency of his killings increased. Garavito did come close to being caught on more than one occasion during his killing spree, including on June 8, 1996, when a boy went missing in the town of Boyaca in North Colombia. Five days later, his decapitated corpse was found in a wooded area with his severed penis in his mouth. The boy's mother discovered her son had been seen with a stranger in the local shop. This man was identified as Luis Garavito and he was questioned by police. He admitted that he'd seen the boy, bought him sweets because he felt sorry for him and then they parted ways. The police apparently believed Garavito and he was released. He realised he needed to relocate and move to a nearby town where, four days later, he raped and murdered a 13-year-old boy. Garavito would collect trophies, specifically would take the photo IDs of some of his victims and would carry them around in a bag. He would hide these with girlfriends of his and he would also document his crimes in a journal. However, eventually, Garavito's killing spree would be brought to an end, but not before he claimed the lives of hundreds of children. All through the 1990s, authorities had suspicions they had a serial killer operating in Colombia due to the number of missing children and their bodies being found with signs of sexual torture and all being bound in similar manners with nylon rope. However, authorities began to pay real attention when on the 7th of November 1998, in an isolated area of the city of Pereira, a mass grave was uncovered which held the corpses of between 25 and 36 young boys. All of the bodies showed signs of being bound, sexually assaulted and tortured. Another mass grave, this time contained the bodies of 41 children, was also found in the area of Rizaralda. Then, a further 27 bodies were found in a mass grave in the neighbouring region of Valle de Corca, so that is approximately 100 bodies of murdered children. Authorities began investigating, but it was a mistake that Garavito made in February 1999 which ultimately sealed his fate. Specifically, on the 6th of February 1999, the bodies of two children were found on a hillside near a sugarcane field outside the city of Palmyra in southwest Colombia. A day later, a third body was found. All three children had been bound, raped and tortured. The cane field these children were found in had been destroyed by fire. Garavito, whilst in a drunken state, had fallen asleep with a lit cigarette on top of the children's bodies and had set the field on fire by accident, almost killing himself. In his panic to escape, he left behind money, his glasses, and a note containing the address of his girlfriend. The girlfriend was spoken to, and she handed the police a bag. In the bag was Garavito's ledger and his trophies, the photographs of the dead children. The police knew they had their man. However, finding Garavito was a different matter. It was quite clear he was going to continue to kill as many children as possible until he was stopped. With this in mind, on the 22nd of April 1999, Garavito targeted his last victim, 12-year-old John Ivan Sabagal. Garavito was drinking brandy in the evening when he came across John selling lottery tickets in the city of Villa Viencio. Garavito claimed he was a local politician and approached John. He then threatened him with a knife and marched John to an isolated hillside and, after binding him, screamed, quote, am I a sadist, whilst masturbating over him. A 16-year-old homeless boy intervened and began to throw stones at Garavito, giving John the chance to slip his bindings. Garavito chased both boys into the woods and the police were called. Garavito was arrested coming out of the woods. He was unable to find either child. When in police custody, Garavito quickly confessed to killing 140 children and this bizarre video shows a moment of that confession. The police were not satisfied with just a confession and they sought concrete evidence of Garavito's guilt and this was in abundance. His DNA was found all over the crime scenes including on the bodies of his victims, but also on alcohol bottles found at the scenes. Also, 
Garvey's took police around the country to the mass graves of the children he murdered. How many bodies were actually recovered varies between sources, but it appears the remains of at least 138 children were discovered. Many of these were skeletonized, having been murdered years before. I found very few pictures of the victims. However, these are the faces of a very small fraction of the children that Garavito violated and then horrifically murdered. Luis Garavito was charged with 172 murders throughout Colombia and he was found guilty of 138 of these. On May the 27th, 2000, he was sentenced to 1,853 years in prison. However, this sentence was essentially meaningless, as, at the time of his sentence, Colombian law stated the longest someone could spend in prison was 40 years. I believe, from what I've read, that the reason for this is that the original Colombian constitution prohibited imprisonment for life. I'm unsure if that's true, and, if it is, what thinking underpinned this, as it leaves a massive loophole where people can kill one or a million and there's no difference in their sentence. That's a really weird decision. However, and it gets worse, due to Garavito helping the authorities recover the bodies of his victims, his sentence was further reduced to 22 years, meaning that, as of 2023, Luis Garavito is eligible for parole. This sentence and situation is ridiculous, but even more so when it's pointed out that since his conviction, Garavito has confessed to approximately 210 murders and is widely believed to have actually killed between 300 and 400 children in Colombia but also in Ecuador and Venezuela, making him the most prolific serial killer in modern history. Before talking about the psychological profile of Luis Garavito and talking about his time in prison, I want to outline why he was able to get away with his crimes for so long. Specifically, Luis Garavito was born into a country that was in a state of chaos due to the Colombian Civil War, which sources state officially started in 1964, but there appears to have been armed conflict in the country since the 1940s. From what I understand, this conflict is still ongoing and involves various groups fighting for control over territories in Colombia, as well as the country as a whole. This includes government forces, far-right and far-left paramilitary organisations and crime syndicates. Most seem to claim they are fighting for the people, others are clearly intent on controlling the drug trade. It seems that the people who have suffered the most in this conflict have been the civilians. Sources state that 260,000 people have been killed in this conflict up to 2018, with a staggering 208,000 of these being civilians not involved in the conflict. Horrific atrocities have been committed by all groups involved in the conflict, including mass executions, with the victims being buried in mass graves, kidnappings, rapes, dismemberments of live victims, as well as other horrors. As an example, a news report from 2015 outlines how government forces have destroyed dozens of quote, chop houses in and around the coastal city of Buenaventura, which were places where people were taken and dismembered. Despite the removal of these so-called chop houses, for years after 2015, it wasn't unusual for body parts to wash up on the shore. It appears that atrocities, such as the murder and rapes of children, were just attributed to part of this conflict, and assumed to have been committed by groups rather than an individual person. Even if they suspected something different, it's quite clear the government forces were too heavily invested in the armed conflict to actually investigate any crimes committed against the common people. In addition to this, Colombia has an extremely high number of so-called street children who are often orphans who have no one looking out for them and no one to even report them missing. It's this environment which enabled Luis Garavito to kill and kill again, but also two other Colombian serial killers, Pedro Lopez and Daniel Barbosa. Between them, these three men killed at least 300 children between around 1969 and 1992 but this could be as many as 700 to 900 children, which is just an insane number and truly horrifying. I've covered some of the most evil and soulless individuals on this channel, but in my opinion, Luis Garavito sits on top of this pile. 
This is not just because of the number of his victims, but also the sheer depravity of his crimes and his continued unwillingness to take responsibility for his actions and his frankly perverse statements made during interviews whilst in prison. As a starting point, I want to play a few second clip from an interview with Garavito, which I think is from 2016, or it may be slightly earlier. I play this to demonstrate how Garavito is still leaning on the devil made me do it defence. This is classic distancing language. It was me, but it wasn't me. Someone else made me do it. Sorry. But let's look at the difference between Garavito and an individual who was truly mentally unwell and committed their crimes due to bizarre beliefs. Specifically, Richard Chase. Richard Chase murdered six people in the space of a month between 1977 and 1978 in Sacramento, California. He had delusional beliefs with him believing he needed to drink the blood of his victims in order to cure his ill health. His victims were randomly chosen, his crime scenes chaotic, with him making no effort to cover up his crimes, leaving fingerprints and footprints at his crime scenes. Chase was completely disconnected from reality. He acted on pure delusion. It was as if the rules of society meant nothing to him. However, let's look at Garavito. He was a calculating, and to a great extent, organised offender. He targeted children he knew would not be missed, used various disguises and ruses in order to gain access to his victims, and took them to pre-selected locations in order to torture, rape and kill them, knowing he wouldn't be disturbed. This was a man fully in control, a man solely focused on fulfilling his sick sexual fantasies. Maybe Garavito has convinced himself that the devil did make him do it, but he doesn't recognise Satan looking back at him when he stares into the mirror. Instead, I believe that Luis Garavito is the epitome of a sadistic sexual psychopath. He gains sexual gratification from engaging in ever more depraved acts which were clearly fully intended to cause these children as much pain as possible for as long as possible. It's clear that he could only gain erection and achieve orgasm from the pain and humiliation of others. I've read somewhere that Garavito was apparently sorry for his crimes and would pray for his victims. Absolute bollocks. This is something that Garavito has claimed, but it's rubbish. This man is a psychopath. He doesn't have the capacity to feel remorse for his actions or compassion for any human being. He couldn't, given the horrific things he did to these children. Their last moments must have been characterised by fear, absolute horror and indescribable pain. Garavito subjected hundreds of children to this horrific fate. His pathetic wailing when he finally confessed to his crimes, I have no doubt was to try and portray himself as remorseful and his stories about his childhood, which seemed to chop and change, I think were made to try and portray himself as a victim. I have no doubt there is some truth in Garavito's statements about his childhood. He likely was raised in a house of violence and, given the situation in Colombia at the time, he likely saw absolute horrors outside the family home. These experiences inevitably shaped his attitudes and beliefs, but lots of people have truly horrific childhoods, but they don't go on to murder hundreds of children. A deprived or traumatic childhood is not an excuse to harm others. You have a choice. Garavito had a choice, and he decided to destroy the lives of innocent children, rip their bodies apart, and dispose of them like rubbish. I think in his own mind, whilst Garavito knows that society frowns on what he did, he doesn't really think he's done anything wrong. As if to reinforce this point, and seriously brace yourself, during his time in prison, Garavito states his intention to become a politician and to be an advocate for children's rights and to work on legislation to protect children. I mean, like, what the fuck? That'd be like letting a paedophile run a daycare or making an arsonist a fireman, but I, I don't know. Luis Garavito is currently 66 years old and apparently has advanced eye cancer. However, I've no doubt, even with his poor health, if he was released tomorrow, he would kill the day after and keep killing for as long as he draws breath. I pray to God that the Colombian authorities find a way to keep this man in prison forever. He is, in my opinion, the epitome of evil. So, were you aware of the crimes of Luis Garavito? There's so much to unpack here, so I'd love to read your comments about his crimes. I've already done a video on Daniel Barbosa, 
but at some point I'm going to do one on Pedro Lopez, so look out for that at some point. Anyway, please like, share and subscribe, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.